Hello, moon babies. It's Molly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here with me on the channel. I'm so pumped <laughs> to do this video because it is some old school witchy YouTube goodness. It is a straight up super fun witchy tag that was generously created for us by Little Cosmic Crow. So thank you so much for putting these questions together. And I was tagged by the beautiful Nathan Bixby. Thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate it. <laughs> and we're just going to roll through some questions today and I'm really looking forward to making this for you. So let's dive in. It's a beautiful Saturday morning and I've had about six cups of coffee, so we're going to try really hard to stay focused, okay? <laughs> so question number one, here we go. Does your sun sign portray you correctly? If not, do your other planetary signs? <laughs> yes, I think uh, I'm a Taurus sun. I think that that comes through in a lot of ways um, through my work, uh, my life as an artist, the way I like to decorate my life and myself. I also have several Pinterest boards dedicated to pictures of cakes that I will never make, but just like to hoard and look at. <laughs> I am a Scorpio moon, and I do think that that expresses itself, uh, sort of the, the part of me that's really interested in the occult, the part of me that really loves uh, like vampire lit and gothic literature. I really love that. I think that my Scorpio moon really shows itself in the music that I make. So I do think that my sun and moon sign are fairly accurate. <laughs> okay, question number two. What songs bring you the most magical vibes? <sighs> okay, I, <laughs> I love all kinds of music and I'm actually obsessed with making magically inspired playlists. I know that that's something that I've spoken about on the channel before and that I actually share fairly regularly on my blog if that's something that you'd like to check out. But as far as the music that brings me the most magical vibes, I think I, I love working with film scores because I think they really do transport you to another place. I really love um, using orchestral music, sometimes really dramatic uh, music in ritual. Uh, also, while I'm doing things, other magical maintenance things like cleaning my house. Uh, but I think it really depends on the magical mood that you're trying to create. Uh, sometimes I want something really ethereal and lofty and something that's going to transport me. And sometimes the magical vibe is a really sort of shit kicky beast mode get it done <laughs> sort of vibe so people and their witchcraft and their music are complicated aren't they <laughs> but in an effort to answer that question i'll leave a link to some of those playlists as well as my own music in the down bar so you can check that out if you're interested okay question number three which one of your deities guides or ancestors is most sarcastic with you if this doesn't apply to you, which of your tarot or oracle decks is? This is a really interesting question, and I know it's something that people talk a lot about. I have to be really honest, I don't know if I have enough experience with this to answer the question adequately. Most of the time, I receive my messages in the form of images and through dreams and not the sort of clairaudient someone is speaking to me. So I feel like sarcasm is difficult to, <laughs> to translate um, as an image or a dream. But I will say in my work with Baba Yaga, she can be really coarse <laughs> and sort of gross and funny, which I adore about her. She reminds me very much of my maternal grandmother. So not necessarily sarcastic, but definitely some hardcore tough love granny vibes. <laughs> Question number four, biggest witchy mess up or misinterpretation? Okay. I think my my general answer to this question is feeling like for a really long time that I needed to do it right, that I needed to adhere 
uh, not only to a very specific aesthetic, but that I also needed to adhere to a very narrow, constricted moral code. Sort of the idea that you cannot do magic for yourself, you should not do magic on yourself, that is a selfish backwards thing to do. You should only be doing magic in an effort to help other people, only if you are totally sure that absolutely nothing can happen, like all of these sort of like the, the couching of doing magic, and I feel like that held me back for a really long time. Uh, yeah, that and feeling like I needed to adhere to this uh, very sort of specific sort of renaissance fair <laughs> approach, which don't get me wrong, there is so much crushed velvet in my closet, you moon babies don't even want to know. <laughs> All right. Would you write a book on your craft? Why? And if you already have, what were your challenges in doing so? So I have actually written uh, a book about art magic, uh, two actually, uh, the first being Art Witch, Practical Tactics for Art Magic, and the second being, what the heck is the name of that book? <laughs> art Magic with the Elements. <laughs> And they're ebooks um, about my practice. But the biggest challenge, I think, was narrowing it down from a big sprawly mess <laughs> into something really focused. I think it can be really difficult to take personal experience, personal gnosis, and condense it and make it into something that's going to be useful. Uh, and understandable for someone else. So I think narrowing it all down and <laughs> hoping it makes sense is the toughest part. Oh, this is a super, super fun question. Okay, if someone wanted to summon you to their circle, what five items would they need? Oh, oh man. Okay. Uh, secondhand paperback copy of Interview with a Vampire would definitely be in there. <laughs> uh, plastic unicorn, for sure. Um, uh, a crusty paintbrush that you forgot to wash out. <laughs> mm. I think a glass of port would be enticing. Probably playing a Nick Cave album, I think that that would help. Maybe a can of dry shampoo. <laughs> My whole life is held together with dry shampoo. <laughs> like a scent. What about, I think maybe uh, clove incense. I think that's my favorite. That's six, that's six things. <laughs> Okay, so five of those six things will most certainly summon me from the astral to your circle. <laughs> okay, question number seven. If you were a ghost, what place would you haunt? This is also a really fun question. If I were a spirit who had a choice, I would inhabit the forests of the Olympic Peninsula. It absolutely stole my heart, and I would happily wander there for eternity. Mm. <laughs> Number eight. What is the funniest way someone has reacted to finding out you're a witch? <sighs> there have been a few good ones, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, but I don't want to embarrass anybody here. I've definitely had family members in the past uh, write me really heartfelt letters, uh, being concerned about my mental health. That's definitely happened. Um, probably the most recent example of this was a production company filmed a commercial at my day job, at my place of work, and it was posted to YouTube. and. Weirdly enough, the internet is so big, but there were a lot of moon babies who saw it and started making comments about, oh my man, Molly, this is where Molly works. And my boss and the CEO of the company uh, looked into it <laughs> and uh, 
I had to be prepared for something like that. I'm very public. I'm not ashamed of it, but it's not something that I, you know, I'm like throwing at people all day long uh, at my day job. If people ask about it, I'm happy to tell them, but I don't feel like it's a thing I need to broadcast to everyone around me. And uh, they came to my desk one day and asked me about, you know, wow, you have a really interesting personal life, don't you? <laughs> so that was kind of super awkward. Uh, there were a few of my coworkers who were really kind of nasty about it and wanted to make fun of me about it and asking me where I parked my broom. They didn't see it in the parking lot. Um, but then there were also some of my coworkers who had really heartfelt questions about um, wanting to contact people um, who passed or if I did readings and was able to help them. So that was actually just like a really interesting experience seeing the, the spectrum of reaction to that. And it can be really interesting when your sort of outing is out of your control. So it was a really benign experience, but it was definitely interesting. <laughs> Truthfully, there were a few of my coworkers who just stopped speaking to me, which I was totally fine with. <laughs> Number nine, do you have any superstitions, uh, irrational practices? Uh, that's, I'm sure I do. I have to think about that for a minute. Um, but specifically, I'm sort of superstitious about housekeeping, like keeping my doorway clear of any sort of clutter and regularly washing the front window, that sort of thing. Uh, superstitions. So my bunny happens to have a very sardonic sense of humor and can be very dark and um, pessimistic in a in an overdramatic, funny way. And when he talks to me about things, I like to knock on wood uh, just because it drives him nuts. <laughs> if you could possess any fantasy magic, uh, what would your power be? Mm -hmm. My first like gut instinct is flight. <laughs> that's that's something I do a lot in meditation and I think that experience would be fantastic. Flight, but I feel like that's not that's not a very thoughtful. It's not a very thoughtful. I don't know how useful that would be. Uh, let's see. Ooh, okay, I know. Uh, psychometry, the ability to do like really accurate psychometry on objects, I think would be a really wild magical power. Um, I don't know, sometimes I, I pretend that I can do that, especially when I'm at a secondhand bookstore. <laughs> I don't think that I'd ever want to be a mind reader or a, a telepath of any kind or know about the future, to be honest. I'm just Number 11, what is something random on your altar? <laughs> uh, my whole dang altar is pretty random, if you've ever seen it, <laughs> if you've been around for the tour videos. But at the same time, they're not. Like, I chose everything that goes on it for a reason. But, so let's maybe go with the most unexpected thing on my altar, maybe. Um, Aside from my Wonder Woman statue, I think it has to be at the moment this really great vintage blown glass wizard that's supposed to be a, a Christmas ornament, one of those painted Christmas ornaments that I have as a Jupiter representation now. I love that. Um, my honey also likes to bring me all of the non-money he finds, uh, things like uh, bar tokens or arcade tokens, things that are supposed to look like money but aren't money. For some reason, I love collecting those things up and keeping them on my altar as well. <laughs> Number 12. If one of the YouTubers you watched was a genie and could grant you three wishes within their power, who would it be and what are your wishes? <sighs> Just one? One YouTuber? Okay, if I had to pick just one, which is really hard, <laughs> I would pick Joanna DeVoe, the kick-ass witch of the Hippie Witch 
podcast as well as the Hippie Witch channel. Um, my first wish would be to tour her bookshelf. She is an avid reader and has all kinds of wild stuff. She's probably the most well-read person <laughs> that I know personally. My second wish would be to go shopping for amazing Stevie Nicks hippie witch loungewear in LA. I think that would be fun. And my third wish would be to take a Thelma and Louise style witchy road trip down the coast of California. I think that'd be great. Number 13. If you could instantly become an expert in any part of your craft or spirituality, what would it be? This is another tough one. I think I have two answers. I think the first answer would be I'd love to be an expert, a, a scholar in the history of magic. It's something that I've been, it's a lifelong interest, something I spend a lot of time researching. I'm fascinated with the development of spiritual traditions as well as sort of the waves and resurgence of interest in occult ideas. So that would be one. The second would probably be herbalism. Really, I think it's so complex, so useful, like really practical knowledge to have as well. And that all of the systems uh, really are just so dense and so rich. That, uh, that's a witchy fantasy of mine, for sure. Number 14, when you die, what do you think will happen to you and your soul? I think that I will no longer feel separate from the cosmic soup and it is my hope that any beauty or love that I can possibly leave behind lives on in the minds of the living. I think that's what will happen. Number 15, our last question. Where do you see yourself spiritually in the next five years? Oh, I'm always really bad at this question when they ask you in a job interview. <laughs> um, I, I do have sort of this reoccurring desire to open or curate some sort of physical space that people can visit, whether that be a garden of some kind or an art temple space that's that's a dream that I have five years from now I hope that uh, I'll have made some serious strides in my meditation practice that's something I would I would love to see for myself <laughs> in the future uh, going deeper getting better improving that skill I don't know, but I hope that whatever it is, it's making me grow and I'm having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed this witchy tag moon babies. Thank you again to Little Cosmic Crow for putting it together and thank you to Nathan for tagging me. And if you would like to participate in this tag, Consider yourself tagged. I would love to see your videos. And if you enjoyed this video, there are tons of Q&As like this on my Patreon. I'll leave a link to that in the down bar. And we'll be doing another big one at the end of the summer. So I'm looking forward to diving deep with you that way. So until we speak again, moon babies, which on, which boldly, and be well. Bye-bye.